across the world, women's rights have radically improved over the past century. A hundred years ago, a few brave women fought for their right to vote. Just over 25 years ago, world leaders met in Beijing to address women's continued lack of political power. Since then, the number of women in parliament has doubled and over a hundred countries have introduced gender quotas. But is this the success story it seems to be? We now know that most active quota adopters are non-democratic, authoritarian countries. Today, the world leaders in women's representation in parliament are Rwanda, Cuba and the United Arab Emirates, all considered autocracies. This begs the question, if part of this amazing progress is in fact nothing but window dressing, serving undemocratic purposes. My name is Elin Bjarnegård, and my research addresses this uncomfortable question. I study contemporary authoritarian countries to understand why autocrats seem to think it's such a good idea to adopt gender equality reforms such as gender quotas. Now, I don't dispute the progress that's been made. I mean, now gender equality reforms are adopted everywhere and by everyone. And a hundred years ago, even here in Europe, women were still fighting for their right to vote. In the Netherlands, Amsterdam-based Wilhelmina Drucke was a radical feminist and suffragette fighting for the emancipation and for the equal rights of men and women. A hundred years ago, she had just seen universal suffrage passed in the Netherlands, but it had not yet been exercised in a Dutch election. A few years later, most European countries had universal suffrage and women could also run for office. Pioneers such as Wilhelmina made continued progress possible and continued struggle. And continued struggle was, and indeed is, necessary. It soon became clear that the formal right to stand for office was not enough to actually change the power structures of parliaments. So in 1995, world leaders met in Beijing to address women's continued lack of political power. It was no longer just in the hands of a few suffragettes. The UN gathered world leaders and over 30,000 activists in Beijing. And there they agreed on the Beijing Platform for Action to increase women's political influence. Gender equality had been mainstreamed. And after Beijing, things really started happening. There was increasing international pressure, especially on poorer countries, where the increase of women in parliaments was connected to material benefits and conditional aid. We saw what has been called a quota fever. Quotas have become the largest electoral reform of our time. And since Beijing in 1995, the number of women in parliament has doubled from 12% in 1995 to 25% today. Research by me and my colleagues show that many of these women who have recently entered politics have done so in undemocratic countries. Autocrats seem surprisingly keen on quota adoption. So this means that the struggle for gender equality has moved from the hands of a few marching suffragettes to the corridors of power in the United Nations to unlikely gender equality champions, autocrats. What should we make of the fact that autocrats seem to like to adopt gender quotas? What's in it for them? Well, to give you a few examples. In Rwanda, the ruling elite has realized that being the world leader in women in parliament actually makes them look quite good, modern and even democratic in neighboring Tanzania. The ruling party 
has realized that when they were designing the quota laws, they made sure that they would not just benefit women in politics, but also the ruling party itself. So the fact that autocrats are adopting gender quotas for perhaps instrumental reasons does not discount the progress made, but it does mean that the struggle goes on. We have come a long way, thanks to Wilhelmina and her contemporaries, who gave us the right not just to vote, but also to stand for office. But the task now for our generation of feminists is to ensure that that right is used and that political office is the democratic wind of opportunity it is supposed to be and that it's not reduced to authoritarian window dressing. <laughs>